There is a distinct lack of a 32-bit ISO file for Ubuntu these days. Well, Canonical dropped the 32-bit ISO for Ubuntu 17.10. Well, I can see their point of view because 32-bit systems are becoming a bit of an endangered species these days. But what can you do if you still have one of these endangered systems? Well, fortunately, the 32-bit package files are still available in repositories, so you can upgrade from an older version of Ubuntu, say like Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support or Ubuntu 17.04, they will upgrade to 32-bit 17.10. Or you can go with an alternative distro or derivative of Ubuntu. For example, Ubuntu Mate, Zubuntu, Lubuntu. But okay, you want the GNOME desktop with the Unity-like interface, or even a stock GNOME desktop because you can have that as well. So we go on to alternative downloads, and you can go for either the network or server installer. I've opted for the server installer well, I've downloaded it from BitTorrent to save a bit of bandwidth for them. So I'm going to proceed ahead with this demonstration in VirtualBox, but it doesn't really matter because it's the same as a full system install. It's just much easier to record a VirtualBox screen. Anyway, I'll quickly run through some of this install because it's a bit different to your standard graphical installer. It's a bit more complex, text-based installer. I know with the Ubuntu server, it'll still work with UEFI motherboards, the UEFI Secure Boot. I'm not so sure about the Net Installer, Please correct me if I'm wrong, but it didn't used to work with the Secure Boot UFI motherboards. If you're unsure, Ubuntu Server is probably the best bet. It's just a bit of a larger file to download, but I think it will just about fit on a CD. So anyway, there's nothing complex so far. I'm just selecting the language and I'm choosing the keyboard layout. So yes, English United Kingdom for me. There'll be a note of all the commands and packages you need to install in the video description. Okay, so after the network configuration, well, assuming that goes okay, the first question you'll see is the host name for your system. I'll just call it something basic like testing. So then set up the username and passwords. Encrypt home directory, well, this is purely your choice, yes or no. I'm going for no, this is just a virtual machine install, so I don't need to. Uh, configure the clock, uh, so yes, it will try and get the time zone from your network, so yeah. Europe, London, okay for me. Okay, now we get to the more complicated bit with the partitioning. Um, if you're doing a dual booting, you need to go into the guided partitioning and to then manual. This is gonna to take too long to go into and this is not the part of the video I want to do, so I'm just gonna do the automatic partitioning. Partition disks, guided partitioning, guided use entire disk. So yeah, finish changes. So yeah, write the changes to the disk. Any HTTP proxy for your system? Not for me, so I'm continuing, leaving it blank. Well, it will retrieve a few files to get the system up and running. Your choice with what you want to do on the updates. I'm going for no automatic updates because we will get this feature as part of the desktop. So choose software to install. None of the above. Install the Grub Bootloader. You're probably going to need this, unless you're dual booting and it's handled by another distribution on your system. No? Otherwise, yep, yeah, go for it. So installation complete. So yeah, carry on, reboot. <laughs> so here's the problem. It looks ugly as anything on boot up and there's nothing here. It's just a server install, so you can have to log in manually. So welcome to Ubuntu 17.10 we are going to need a load of packages to get this going. So sudo apt install, Ubuntu session, or if you want the stock GNOME desktop, go for GNOME session instead. I've done videos of both desktops so you can see what they look like and make an informed decision. Ubuntu desktop, GDM3, which is the login screen, and Plymouth Theme Ubuntu logo. So the four main packages there, of which a couple of them are meta packages, and we're going to end up with that lot of applications. So 1,169 to install, 560 meg of archive needed, and nearly two gig of additional disk space will be used. So yes, please continue. Well, now you might want to have a drink, get something to eat. 
Okay, well, there is an error there, but we'll sort that out upon the reboots because it's the network manager and, yeah, there is no desktop at the moment to fix it. So, yeah. Well, now I need to fix the grub boot screen. So, Control L to clear the screen. So, type sudo sed i single quote s slash grub cmd line linux default equals double quote double quote slash grub cmd line linux default equals i've made a typo there but it's quiet splash video equals uve safb colon mode underscore option equals your monitor resolution so in my case it's 1920 by 1080 and 60 frames a second comma mttr equals three comma scroll equals y wrap double quote forward slash single quote and now the file we're changing which is slash etc slash default slash grub. Then next command, sudo sed dash i single quote s slash hash grub gfx mode equals 640 by 480 forward slash grub gfx mode equals and your monitor resolution again. So that's 1920 by 1080 for me and slash single quote and the follower changing slash etc slash default slash grub then echo double quote phaser fb mode option equals the monitor resolution again 1920 by 1080 hyphen 60 space mttr equals 3 space scroll equals y wrap double quote pipe sudo t dash a and the file we're changing slash etc slash init ram fs hyphen tools slash modules and the final command for fixing grub is echo then uppercase frame buffer equals lowercase y well more like the file we're creating so it's pipe sudo t slash etc slash init ram fs hyphen tools slash conf dot d slash splash actually i lied about this being the final commands but these are a lot easier so it's sudo update hyphen init ram fs space hyphen u okay some error message i haven't really looked into yet then that sudo update hyphen grub and now finally sudo reboot Let's see what happens. Oh, we've got a different color grub screen. Some error with the VirtualBox driver. A dodgy version of the Plymouth boot screen. Now the GNOME Display Manager, where I can select my login. The options, so I've got Ubuntu on Wayland or Ubuntu on Xorg. Ubuntu on Wayland, go for it. And here we go, there's a 32-bit version of Ubuntu. You named dash a so we've got linux 4.13 i686 and there you go that's how to get the 32-bit version of ubuntu 1710 thanks for watching i'll see you all later